the best TEFL course, the best TESOL course. Hmm, this video looks at the important factors when choosing a course. There's a blog post of mine that's linked in the description below that looks at this in more detail. So head on over and have a look if you want to read instead. Oh, and I'll use TEFL and TESOL interchangeably here. I'll link a video in the car that explains the difference and also I'll add a link in the description for you as well. If you want to get a job teaching English, either abroad or in your home country, you'll usually need a TEFL or TESOL certificate. And these can be obtained through various schools that you can search for online. And there's quite a lot of them. And the trouble is you need some sort of criteria, some sort of minimum that you can say the courses have to have this. And this is what we'll look at first. So for instance, does it have teaching practice? And by teaching practice, we really mean in front of a genuine class. Now, some courses that are, say, not so good might offer you teaching practice, but it's only in front of your fellow class members. So really check that it's in front of a live class. The next factor is the training length. Is the course at least 120 hours? Now, for an in-house course, this will be four weeks long with 20 training days. Each day, six hours makes 120. You can get courses that are less than 120 hours, but they may not be seen as, as valuable by potential employers. Some schools also offer online components. And so this 120 hours is related to the course content. Now, if you're doing this online at home, it could take you anything from a few weeks to a few months, depending on how fast you go and how much time you can spend on it. The other factor that is really important is qualified instructors. Are the instructors qualified? Can you see that they're qualified from the descriptions? Um, a lot of the cheaper courses will save money by employing instructors that aren't very good or aren't qualified and this is where they make their savings and it doesn't help you. Is the training course internationally recognized? A so-called accreditation. Now please don't confuse accreditation with membership. A membership is usually obtained by paying for it but accreditation is a more involved process where people check out the course and a respected accreditation body will take the time to make sure that they don't just allow anyone into like the club. The price is also an important aspect. The old saying about if it looks too good to be true, it probably is, applies here. Now, when you're looking at a TEFL course, quality should be important and that quality will have a price. So depending on the type of course you do, it could cost anything between, say, a thousand to two and a half thousand dollars. So when you're looking online for, for a suitable TEFL course, here are some, some real red flags that you want to watch out for. A lack of a recognized accreditation. That is a big, big red flag. Do they only have very short or very cheap courses? as also a sign of um, something that's not going to be worth your time or money. Is it hard to contact the organization? Or even more important, is it hard to contact former pupils? If you can contact the organization easily and you can contact former students easily, that's a good sign. There are a few other little things that some of the courses offer, which I personally don't find as important, for instance, job search support. Now, I personally feel that if, if you can get through a course, you also have the wherewithal to look for a job. But there are um, some courses that offer um, job search support afterwards. So it'll go into things like CVs, application letters, visa requirements, accommodation, contract details, all this type of thing. Now, it should be worth pointing out that the a TEFL or TESOL certificate 
is not the same as a teaching degree. Okay, anyone can pass out a TEFL or a TESOL certificate. And you can buy them online for like $50. But please don't do this because that's just $50 wasted. Any decent employer will look at this and know that it's worthless. All right, so if you are interested in teaching English, take the time and invest in yourself and do it properly. Ultimately, you're cheating yourself. So the question, what is the best TEFL course, is a bit like the question, what's the best banana cake recipe? Um, it's very subjective and it depends on you. Your circumstances and your preferences are unique to you. Did any of these factors surprise you? Or did I miss anything out that you think is also important? Please, please do let me know in the comments below. That rounds up this short video on uh, how to choose a decent TEFL course. In the next video, I'll recommend a few to save you the time of looking through. So please subscribe to the channel for updates and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.